Research is really the cornerstone of caring for patients with cancer. All the treatments we have right now, and, and there are many uh, that, that are on our shelves in our offices in the hospital, all of those treatments are there because of research. At some point, it could have been a year ago or it could have been 20 or 30 years ago, those drugs were new and we didn't know whether they were gonna work in fighting cancer, much less treat an infection. Only by testing those therapies in, in, a, in this paradigm of what's called clinical research, by studying how those drugs work in, in patients, not in a test tube, not in an animal, but in patients, have we come to understand what works and what doesn't work. The spirit of research is to find a better therapy for for a patient and, and to try to offer what may be a new and better therapy. One thing that also gets uh, maybe not, that gets uh, swept under the rug a bit is what you're doing when you participate in a research study, we hope will benefit you. We wouldn't want you to not benefit from a therapy. But in truth, that study is gonna take many years to, to find out whether treatment A or B is better. And what you're doing is hopefully helping yourself, but you're helping generations of people beyond, behind you who one day may come into a doctor's office and find out that they have lung cancer and their doctor says to them, you can receive treatment B now. It's now standard and approved. That's because that drug got approved and it was proven to be better than treatment A. But by and large, your oncologist should be able to give you information about how you could get access to something that would be, would be a, a, a clinical research program, either at your center or somewhere nearby. And if it requires resources such as uh, financial or transportation, often there are um, uh, programs in place or foundations that can help with your, your transition to an environment where you can get access to research.